Hello and welcome to Telecom TV. I'm Martin Warwick. We're here in California, in San Jose, at the NFV World Congress 2017. And I'm talking with Pascal Menezes, who is CTO of the MEF, MEF Forum, as it is now. Pascal, great to see you again. You're looking very relaxed and chilled there. Oh, thank it's, you. It's very warm outside. It's good, that's, this, why. Yeah, that's why. Um, so let's, let's start like this. What do you think the state of the transformation journey for CSPs is now? How far along are they? And are there many who are leaps and bounds above others and well in front? I, I do think the industry is absolutely, completely the CSP industry. Um, has adopted the idea that, you know, it's going to be cloud native, right? They watch the OTT guys, you know, my background coming from Microsoft, mm. you know, is basically the OTT guys have done it, you know. Uh, they figured out how to do this hyperscale model, how to have elastic capabilities, how to do on-demand, you know, you know, the whole DevOps, the ability to go on a portal, no one's involved, it's tenant goes in provisions and computers does all the stuff, machines do all the stuff, and basically, it, it, it works, so there's no people involved, right? Sure. Uh, so this is, this is being proven out. The CSP has looked at that and said, hey, we need to be there. We need to be doing this. It's the only way to go forward. The complexities are high. You know, we only get so much revenue per dollar in services, and, you know, and that's all sort of driving down to commoditization. And so we need to automate. And this is about automation, right? And then the s speed and velocity of service, right? Thank you. That's a good answer. Now, but a lot of CSPs are finding the transformation process, both in terms of technology and the organization psychology of the organization itself, really difficult to deal with. Um, do you think that the transformation journey and the, the angst some of them are going through in doing it, they may want to transform, but they're finding the actual process really quite difficult, some of them. Is it worth the pain, do you think? It, I, absolutely. You have to go through this transformation. If it's like... It's like, you know, the 70s were the 70s, we're now in 2017. <laughs> Are you going to transform from, you know, having certain clothes and the long hair, and now, you know, it's a different path. Look, the fact is, we have to move to this model, right? And the reason why there's resistance in any, it's change. And change has resistance. And we're talking about, you know, potential of job changes. You know, we're going to remove people from their daily jobs that we're doing and managing networks to having machines do it, yeah. right? Yeah. And it's a, that's a fact. And you know, what are you going to do with these people? Well, they're going to have to do something different. You know, network engineers are have to know programming and APIs, and they've never done that before. And like, who wants to be a programmer when I want to know about networks, right? Yeah. So, you know, you know, we have DevOps. Devs are operating networks. I mean, they carry pagers and you know, hand, I mean, that's just un unnatural. But it is the state of where we are is an industry and it's, you know, everybody's adopting it. And if you look right across the industry, you know, even from startups to anybody offering any kind of services, they're all moving in the same model because it's proven out, it works. Sure. Right. But that transformation and bringing in IT, IT terminology, IT experience, and changing because, I mean, telcos, CSPs didn't have much to do yes, with IT, exactly. did they? Let's face it, it yeah. was hard engineering and hard wiring. Yes. You know, that's what seems to be, well, it's the necessity, but it's the thing that's causing the difficulty. It is. It's, it's, it's hard. Change is hard, and I really empathize with that position. And you are right. Telcos have never really been really great at IT, and now they have to be. And they're trying to be, and you know, some of them are being really successful moving that organization. Like I said, some are leaps and bounds ahead than others. But I think they, they, they create the leadership that everybody gets to follow, you know, being in the same group of people. Um, they get to say, okay, you know, I'm not an OTT, but look at those guys. They're a CSP, and look what they're doing, so we can do that too. And that's good. That's healthy. Now, you as CTO of MEF Forum, what do you bring to the party? How do you help the various parties that are involved with along this journey? So what we're doing, you know, the, the MEF came from a carry Ethernet background yep. and now you know, created it from zero to $80 billion market. We've talked about it many times. That's, that's just, you know, amazing. But what the MEF is now has a new vision is how do we move to this orchestrated model? And now, you know, remember a year ago, the idea of orchestration, life cycles of orchestration, uh, was not really well known. I mean, it was always SDN, NIV, SDN, that's right. Yeah. Now you're seeing this, oh, LSO, SDNV, and they're all now synonymous with each other, mm. right? 
And so this is really awesome. So the, the MEP has really created this LSO kind of framework and this labeling and this description. And now you see ONAP has come in, an open source project with yep. OpenO and Ecomp and you have OSM and all of this is starting to kind of really realize, okay, you need this kind of orchestration stuff from the top to kind of do all this you know, programmable networks and virtualization networks idea. So that's what the MEF has done you know, in the last of the year. But the real vision we are going after, we will continue to go after, is network as a service. Right. We really believe networks have to be more than just bandwidth. Right, this is really important because the revenue these CSPs have to generate have to be different than just even though bandwidth's on the rise, the margins are dropping, the complexity is increasing, right? And they can't keep throwing people at this because it keeps, you know, if the you know the if the margins are dropping and even though the revenues are increasing because of kind of you know commoditization, then you need automation. Okay, so that's one thing. Then the thing is, I'm not going to keep doing products on a downward you know, commoditization curve. Sure. I want something new and exciting. Yeah. And what, what NFV allows in this idea of virtualization and network as a service specifically, is you can add new revenue opportunities. So let me give you an example. Enterprises who are buying this as bandwidth, if you want to think of it, I call it intelligent bandwidth. It's, it's enterprise in the past had to do all of themselves. They would have to do firewalls and all these security postures and put in WAN optimizations at the end and, you know, VPNs. You know, now you're seeing all that can be pushed out to the service providers and say, you know, you do all of that. That's what you're really good at. And they can do that now with great automation and create some new, new revenue opportunities. And which the enterprise don't even want to do anyways because they're just outsourcing anyways to manage providers. So. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Of course yeah. it and you've led me neatly into my next question. Oh, oh, you're very good of you. <laughs> uh, because a while back you mentioned cloud native. I mean, we're sat here talking in acronyms and initials as people in this industry always do. But things bob up every year. You get a new buzz phrase for, the, for six that's months, true. a year, whatever that is. One of which is cloud native. The other which is network automation you've mentioned and zero touch. And we'll yeah. come on to those in a second. But very briefly, what is... Cloud native. What does it mean to CSPs? Uh, to, I, I, what I believe is cloud native. I'm just giving my opinion. Sure. Um, is is basically emulating just like what the OTT cloud guys have done to be just like that. Hyperscale data centers. You know the ability to have a single portal all orchestrated by software. You know zero touch. Meaning you know machines are doing their work, including you know when things go wrong, they try to automate the diagnostics. You know, you really want to remove as many people out of the equation and allow machines to do it. Now that's a problem, because you're going to displace people sure. who are doing those operational skills. But it also means you get them to move into other areas that are more strategic, you know, and that's a good thing for them if they're willing to make that transition and changes. So cloud native to me is simulating and emulating like the OTT operators have done. You know, that they can deliver this massive hyperscale platform, and now they're delivering it in global scales, meaning the footprint wasn't just in geographic data centers. They're now moving you know, their compute all the way to the edges in every city possible to get the latencies down. And I think this is really good where operators, CSPs, can copy that. And now we have a cloud native platform from the OTT guys, the service providers of the CSPs, and eventually this will bleed into the enterprises. Now once we have a cloud native end to end, then orchestration can have APIs talking east, west to each other and you know, when you provision a subscriber, I mean, a tenant wants to provision his own resource in his own enterprise, and it touches an ecosystem of a CSP or OTT as a part of that service, it's all done by that single portal machine. Do you follow what I'm saying? I do, yeah. Because yeah. I don't, yeah. a, a tenant wouldn't have to go into its own network, the CSP's portal, and the OTT's portal, that's just very complex. It shouldn't have to be that way. So hopefully the end result of all this with the de full deployment of SDN, NFV, with orchestration, with everything else and with virtualization and the transformation is complete, the end result is to have a network which is almost anticipatory, certainly very quick in reacting to change because there'll be a lot more traffic on the network that can come and go very, very quickly. It's got also, what's not being mentioned at the moment, for evident reasons, but the end user, the subscriber, the customer, the enterprise, whatever it may be, they have been told by their CSPs that they can expect always a better and better and better communications experience. 
Will that happen fairly soon or is it still a long way away? Um, you know, that's, that's a hard question. <laughs> I wish, I mean, it's like a crystal ball. If I had a crystal ball and I was right, I'd be, you know, I'd be, it'd be great. But um, I've been wrong sometimes and sometimes I've been right. So I, I don't know. But I can tell you this thing, you know, we know for sure, this, this we know for sure is more and more, and you just saw the announcements from Google, Amazon, Microsoft talking about their cloud yep. revenues, huge you know, revenues, upscales, um, uptake. So if you look at that, we know that the IT is going to the cloud. Okay, so maybe this is another definition of cloud native. If that IT is going to the cloud, the moving parts from the device where the subscriber is to the cloud somewhere out there is a huge amount of moving parts, you know, talking about He's using a Wi-Fi with a BYOD device, you know, and then he's accessing some network somewhere to finally get out on some WAN network run by maybe a CSP or the internet, who knows, SD-WAN, who knows, and then finally hits some OTT cloud guy who then has a huge spine to aggregate all the networks in to then these data centers sprinkled all over the world, right? And that's a long food chain to get right. You know, that's radically different when the enterprise ran their own services in their data center and they own their own MPLS carry ethernet WANs and they had tight control over that. Now you've, you've lost that control completely, right? So that's, 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 that's a journey that I think we're, on, we're undertaking and while we go through that journey, for sure, we have to have the ability for these applications that start at some device and ends at some service endpoint with this huge food chain to be able to be orchestrated and work just flawlessly. Because when they don't work, who's going to sit there and figure out what the, what's going on and how bad, like, where is the problem? Is the application? Is it the Wi-Fi? Is it the device? The driver? Is it the service endpoint? Is it the... Or more than one. Or all the above. And yeah. who's going to diagnose this thing? And it's the finger pointing and the phone calls. And they, that's, that's like the 70s. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the 70s again. Yeah. Okay, then. Pascal Menezes, thank you very much indeed. Oh, thank you so much for having me.